What's up guys? In this video I'm gonna show you in 10 minutes my whole 2JZ GE Turbo with 533 horsepower which I put inside my BMW E46 which is my uh, drift car. So I hope you enjoy, stay to the end, I have some driving and drifting there. Hope you have fun. That's my drift project. Got this engine with the uh, nice exhaust manifold but unfortunately it wasn't turbo so I couldn't use it. Took it out. Now I had the task to take all the uh, intake manifolds, <laughs> intake manifolds because there's a bunch of parts from the top of the valve cover. Then it was time to remove the valve cover with the engine and top dead center, remove the timing belt and then I can take the exhaust cam gear. The important thing here to know is there's a sequence to remove the caps so the camshaft doesn't get damaged. And it's easier if you store them in the same order you took them out. A little tip here, hold with the wrench and then you can break the VVTi loose. And there's a very common mistake which is there, there are two extra bolts on the cap number one. And uh, they are smaller, very easy to miss. And you end up breaking, taking that cap out of the way. Now crankshaft is out, everything is out, everything is organized. Cleaning the valves to be sure that all the gunk that was there is out of the way. So scuff pad, 1000 grit, 2000 grit and then 3000 grit. So got this uh, gap ring tool from some racing and I used the, the largest gap I could use on my rings. And yeah, did it all on the engine, cylinder by cylinder. So first, before the crankshaft, we need to install the bearings. A good idea is to clean them because they come full of metal in it. And then uh, put some assembly lube and then time to drop the crankshaft in there. So I had uh, main studs from ARP. So I got ARPs installed in there using fastener assembly lube. I got uh, 0.5 over the bore of the whisker pistons. It is a forged piston um, and also a H-beam mainly rods. They are also forged. And so you put a circlip, put the rod in the middle, push it in there and finish with the circlip and it's ready to receive the rings. The bottom ring is the oil ring which has this springy one and goes between a sandwich of rings. So there's a ring on the bottom, the springy one and one on the top. And then you gotta use a little tool to put the second ring and the first ring to be sure you're not gonna scratch anything. Now putting the bearings on the rods, put a lot of assembly loop, put oil on the installer tool and then squeeze the piston in there and then drop into the cylinder carefully. So everything installed and finally you could see the engine moving for the first time with no resistance or anything. That was amazing. Now tapping the oil pan for the turbo return line. So using a Christmas tree bit and opening a little, a little hole in there and then uh, treading it so I could just screw the adapter, eBay adapter. I got a OEM pressure oil pump, put an ultra gray, carefully put in the engine without messing up the ultra gray and torque to spec. For the bottom pan we put a good layer of ultra gray going inside the uh, screw holes but I end up spreading with my fingers which is fine. Uh, it's just important to let it dry for a few minutes so you get a good thick gasket. Now I'm installing the baffle plate and the oil pickup tube. It's pretty good. This engine has all this stuff already. With that all done, it's pretty easy. It's time to put the oil pan and this is a pain because it always uh, leaks oil from there. So put a big gasket and let it wait for a few minutes then put in there sit for a few more minutes before you start working. We need a spring compressor to install the valves, the springs and the retainers uh, so we are able to put the keepers in there. So I rebuilt the VVTi gear. Uh, if, it, if those gasket fail you're gonna have oil leaking from there. The purple arrows show where I use to mark so I got a sharp tool and mark, as you see on my uh, green arrows, you see a couple marks. Those marks will guarantee that when I put it back together, it will be a line again. 
uh, and it's going to match the laser alignment that was done when it was factory assembled. Install the MLS gasket and then put the head on there. I use the OEM head bolts um, and it's just like a crazy kind of torque. You need to do some steps and marks and stuff. I'm going to call those lifters but I don't know if they are actually lifters. But you need to put assembly lube on the top, uh, on the bottom, put them in there, put assembly lube on the side of them and on the top of them. Then you can drop the camshafts, which got to be on the certain orientation uh, in order for you to be able to start putting the caps on certain order again. And that orientation, the engine got to be on top that center again. The oil filter support and the uh, small intake manifold, they were installed ready to receive the injectors and the fuel rail. Later on, I got uh, 1200 cc DWs, but for now, I was using the OEM. This exhaust manifold I got on eBay, it works perfectly and it looks actually very, very good. And that was time to bring the Beamer inside the house, and of course, all that good work to take the engine out of there. Uh, it took me a good two nights, which was a bunch of hours, but yeah, I was happy. It is out. So this is the main intake manifold, which is the FFIM from eBay. Uh, it's super cheap. I paid hundred dollars, but it's super hard to install. You gotta put your hand inside there. My my arm got stuck there twice, but it's beautiful. And because of that intake, because it's so big, I needed to cut where my left arm is. Um, that was enclosed, so I cut it off. I, re I deleted the brake booster and I deleted the ABS module which uh, was where the, those two little holes are on the bottom and got this kit from Chase Base. Uh, totally worth it. Okay, this is a no-no but it's also a good idea. So the flex hose itself is great. The connector on the other hand which is this thing that I have on my left arm is not good do not use that buy a silicone hose that's what i did after three of them failed me buy a silicone hose cut to the size and fit the silicone hose in your radiator and the flex hose inside the silicone hose and then clamp both and you're good to go can't forget the catch can i got this one from ebay two inputs one output one input from each valve cover and to attach that to the valve cover, I used this uh, swivel banjo from um, Radium. To make a ZF transmission to attach on the 2JZ, we have this uh, PMC adapter, which is a flywheel. It's a special flywheel. You can see that's deeper than normal. In there, I got a ACT BMW M3 clutch. And then time to drop the engine in the car. And this was actually pretty hard for me because I needed to hammer the tunnel or use the tool to uh, open the tunnel a little more because uh, of the adapter. It wasn't getting in and I didn't know exactly what to do at that time. So I just shoved it in. It ended up working, but you need to open the tunnel. The purple arrow is the custom made drive shaft. The green arrow is the adapter for that drive shaft to the ZF transmission, which also requires a special uh, transmission mount, which is that one. I guess one of the messiest part was wiring everything. I was wiring here smart coils. I used a speed EFI ECU. You see here, engine is done, ready, side by side with the Eclipse. Now I'm going to let you enjoy some driving. Check it out. Alright guys, I really hope you like it. It was around 3,000 files to go through to get this 10 minutes for you trying to choose what was more important, what wasn't. And 
I mean, it's so important to me. The last two clips was me driving a friend, just a reaction video, and then me drifting. So this car is amazing. The car not so much is rusty and has some problems. I got another shell, but the engine is gonna go from one car to the other. So I love it. Don't forget to subscribe. There's much more to come. I'm gonna build a another 2JZ that goes on my Toyota Supra. And that one is gonna have around 800 or a little over. Stay tuned. I wish you guys Merry Christmas, enjoy your holidays, stay with your family, stay safe, and I'll catch you later.